A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to continue a series of videos on the idea of microbes living inside our guts. And to be more specific, on what effects they actually have on us, and the bizarre relationship we have with these microbes that most of us are probably not aware of. And while all of the previous discussions about this should be in the description below, but in this video we're going to cover some of the new discoveries from 2024 and focus on some of the recent discoveries that once again are maybe somewhat mind-blowing and somewhat unexpected. Because this time researchers actually discovered a lot of things when it comes to effects on the brain as well. Or basically how the microbes inside of us, specifically inside our guts, seem to be either correlated or possibly even cause quite a few well-known issues. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but here just a few basics. So when it comes to human microbiota, it is super complex. We don't just have microbes inside our guts, we basically have them everywhere. Pretty much every single organ in our body seems to have its own microbiome. There's even been a recent study we're probably going to be discussing sometimes in the future that suggests we might even have microbiome inside our brains. But the microbes inside our guts seem to be the most numerous and the most influential. In terms of weight, they seem to be approximately 500 grams in total, making them the heaviest microbiome inside our body. But in terms of quantity, they potentially outnumber actual cells in our body. Here we're talking about trillions and trillions microbes residing in our guts. But what's really intriguing and what's I guess somewhat unusual is that every single person, every adult, actually ends up with their own unique microbiome that's even more unique than your fingerprint. Even identical twins, raised in the same house, will actually have different microbiome. You can learn more about these facts, myths and misconceptions in one of the papers in the description. But these microbes inside of us don't just live there and don't just help us digest stuff, they actually seem to physically control a lot of things inside of us without anyone realizing. And so here's actually one of the recent papers that discovered something nobody knew. In the study by Nina Hapner and her team, researchers realized that the microbes inside of us, even inside infants, seem to have a 24-hour cycle, directly correlated to the famous circadian rhythm. And so here, bacteria inside guts of babies as young as two weeks old were actually producing metabolites that were then responsible for the control of a lot of bodily functions on an extremely specific cycle. And many of these metabolites go inside our brain and then basically make us either sleepy, hungry, and so on. And so in other words, the discovery from the study basically suggests that the circadian rhythm, your sleep cycle, your hunger cycle, and so on, seems to be also controlled by bacteria inside our guts. They seem to directly control the cycle by producing various molecules and seem to directly control when babies eat, when they defecate, and when they sleep which eventually becomes your typical circadian cycle as you become an adult. All the exactly why this is done and why they have this cycle is obviously currently unknown. But this is of course one of the more unusual discoveries in regards to the control they have over us discovered in the last few years. But then there was actually something else discovered very recently that's maybe a little bit more unnerving. In this case, the paper by Chi Su and her team focused on something slightly different. And specifically by collecting fecal samples or basically poop samples from 1600 children, some of which were diagnosed with autism, they were able to thoroughly analyze the microbiome for each of these children, discovering an unusual pattern. Here, basically by comparing viruses, archaea, bacteria, and even fungi inside their stool, they identified 14 archaea, 51 bacteria, 7 fungi, 18 viruses, 27 specific microbial genes, and 12 different metabolic pathways, that seem to be very different between neurotypical children and children with autism. In other words, just to rephrase this, they actually found a direct connection or a direct difference between microbiome of autistic children compared to children who are not diagnosed. And that's of course a somewhat unusual and also somewhat crucial discovery. It basically hints at a lot of things when it comes to our brain, our thoughts, our moods, and even our decision making seems to be directly affected by bacteria inside of us and in some cases it might even cause certain psychiatric disorders or certain problems. And though it might seem like maybe this is just some kind of a link that was misinterpreted or misunderstood, a separate study that we're going to be discussing right now potentially confirms these results. Now here this was not a study on autism but on 
social anxiety disorder, but in this study by Nathaniel Ritz and his team, scientists did something somewhat intriguing. And once again, it involved poop. But here this was poop from either healthy controls or people diagnosed with social anxiety disorder. And while they basically took this poop and then transplanted this poop into baby mice that were known to have no microbes whatsoever. And so yeah, this was a mouse experiment. But intriguingly, in every single case, they pretty much discovered the same. Mice that contained microbes from the people with the anxiety disorder continuously showed a much higher response to social fear and were basically also displaying this bizarre anxiety disorder, avoiding other mice. Moreover, they never fully recovered and never became social again, even after their food was changed and after the experiment was finished. And this was a really intriguing hint that, in this case, there seems to be a direct connection between microbiome and social anxiety disorder, with certain microbes potentially playing a very important role in developing social fears and possibly other anxiety as well. Now, something very similar was discovered in one of the previous studies we've discussed in the video in the description, so this is essentially yet another confirmation that microbes in our guts seem to have a direct effect on our stress levels and even seem to have an effect on various anxiety disorders. And then we have this other study I wanted to discuss that seems to hint at something even more potent. This extremely recent study suggests that the microbes inside our guts also potentially helped us develop our bigger brains and thus our intelligence. This is based on a study by Elizabeth Mallott and a team that studied the primate gut microbiome, comparing three different species and once again using mice as a kind of a subject. And here the hypothesis was pretty simple. The hypothesis was that the microbes inside of us potentially produce different types of molecules and different types of metabolites that directly help our brains and directly develop our intelligence. Something that a lot of other animals potentially don't possess, or at least don't possess in similar amounts, because their body requires something different. And to conduct this study, researchers picked three different species. The social and somewhat intelligent species known as squirrel monkeys, or Saimiri boliviensis, and macaques, macaca mulata. But the reason they pick macaques and squirrel monkeys is because they actually do have slightly different lifestyles and thus possess slightly different intelligence. Humans and squirrel monkeys are technically classified as brain prioritizing. In other words, both for the squirrel monkeys and humans, the size of the brain is much larger compared to the rest of the body. Or at least if you compare the total weight of the brain compared to the weight of the body. Which is not the same for macaques. By weight, their brains are much smaller and overall their lifestyle is very different as well. And because they also have a much more active lifestyle, as a result, their bodies actually require energy for a lot of physical activity compared to basically, I guess, thinking. And so the hypothesis here was kind of simple. In general, brain tissue requires a lot of stuff. It's basically extremely expensive in terms of metabolism. And so as a result, the body of a macaque compared to the body of the squirrel monkey in terms of evolution would have to go through very different changes in order to accommodate and feed larger brains. And so for spider macaques, the priority here would be feeding the brain as opposed to feeding the rest of the body. The opposite for the macaques. And the assumption in regards to microbiome in the guts was that the microbes in the guts are going to be specializing in something very specific in order to produce as many metabolites for the brain as possible. So for example, there will be microbes that would dramatically change metabolism in order to change the production of insulin and in order to change weight gain. And so to test the hypothesis, once again, they extracted some poop with the poop then introduced into various mice to see what happens. Here the mice were monitored on weight, levels of glucose, fat percentage and liver function. And as expected, the results were very different. And the biggest difference, surprisingly, was between squirrel monkeys and macaques. Or technically, humans as squirrel monkeys and macaques. The mice that received poop from squirrel monkeys had microbes shift in metabolism to dramatically increase energy use as opposed to energy storage mostly releasing different metabolites in order to grow the brain, as opposed to storing this energy as some kind of a fat deposit. And something very similar was observed with the mice receiving poop from humans as well. So basically here the mice had a very high level of triglycerides, very low cholesterol levels, very low weight gain, and very high levels of glucose. Basically all of the components required for growing brain tissue. But the macaque poop mice essentially had almost everything to help them store the energy, dramatically reducing the levels of glucose and increasing the levels of fat. 
with the overall conclusion being pretty simple. The gut microbes in species with big brains, so basically species like us, seem to mostly focus on energy production in order to feed our brains. But obviously exactly what they produce and what sort of molecules would be important here is still unknown. And the conclusion from the study is really that the gut microbiome very likely helped humans evolve large brains and potentially did something similar to a lot of other species where brains play a very important role. And so gut microbes don't just control us, they don't just produce various disorders, they might have also been responsible for basically making us smart. Or at least physically assisting the development of intelligence, which seems to have also happened in some other species. But that's of course just one of the first discoveries, and we'll definitely come back and talk more about this because this is a super fascinating topic. This idea of microbes in our guts basically being like these tiny controllers and tiny overlords is more or less a relatively recent discovery, and it's definitely something I would like to explore more, and so make sure to subscribe if you'd like to find out what we discover together. On that note, Thank you for watching, check out previous parts in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about biology, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Uh, I guess I'm gonna go eat some kimchi and yogurt and stuff because all of these studies made me hungry, but I have to find a way to support my microbiome because my little overlords need to be happy.